Hello Manchester City fans, we are back here with another post-match review. We've got some good things coming for you in just a little bit, but City have beaten Red Star Belgrade 3-1. Fantastic result for City, excellent in the second half I do have to say, and we're going to tee you up now. We've got Simon Baikowski's comprehensive review of the game. We've got Pep Guardiola's uh, post-match press conference and Cal Walker discussing the Manchester City win. Enjoy. Well, Manchester City's defence of their Champions League title got off to a pretty solid start last night at the Etihad. They beat Red Star Belgrade 3-1. Uh, they didn't, didn't have it their own way for the whole game. Uh, Red Star took the lead on the stroke of half-time to the delight of their travelling contingent and, and the shock of pretty much everyone else at the ground because City had dominated the game. Uh, should have taken the lead themselves by that point. They had several really good opportunities to score. Haaland culpable again. Foden missed missed the goal on in front of goal. Um, and then they just switched off and uh, and Diaz got, got beaten for pace. The offside trap didn't work and the goal was initially ruled out for offside, but then given. And uh, so Red Star had the lead at half-time, but just like at West Ham on Saturday when they also... Um, created so many chances. Uh, they scored swiftly after the restart. This time, Julian Alvarez, fantastic feat um, to uh, to control the ball in the penalty area, take it away from the keeper and then slot it into the net. So um, a fantastic evening for him in what is a really good season. And he followed that up by uh, hitting a free kick direct enough that the, uh, the poor Red Star Belgrade Keeper could only punch into his own net. Uh, a bit of an embarrassing moment in a game where otherwise he'd made a load of saves to to keep his team uh, firmly in the game. And uh, Rodri, of course, then, you know, so he's hero from Istanbul, uh, popping up with a goal. He'd looked lively all night. He seems to be taking a lot more shots this season. Um, getting forward a bit more helps by the fact that you've had Matteo Kovacic alongside him on... Um, on Tuesday night, he had uh, Mateus Nunes, who was keeping back. So he had the sort of... <laughs> you felt like he wanted to score all night, and he did get his goal. So a really uh, promising sign from from Rodri. Less promising was the sight of Bernardo Silva coming off before half-time. So Guardiola said, um, it's, it's not good. He'll miss the next few games. Um, with with injury becomes the fifth City player to be to be absent with injury and I think four of those started the the Champions League final you've got Bernardo Silva John Stones Jack Grealish and Kevin De Bruyne and then Kovacic as well who has looked so good since he since he came in at uh, at the the preseason tour for the summer so that is not good when you've got a squad of effectively 23 if you count in three goalkeepers with Scott Carson to have five players injured is a huge chunk of that. And City have got Nottingham Forest at the weekend who've, who've started the season pretty well. Um, picked up a big win away at Chelsea after um, scoring two at Old Trafford to nearly sort of stun United. So they will be coming to the Etihad with a bit more renewed hope than they did last season for, for away games. And yeah, City will have to deal with with their injury situation. They've got Newcastle away next week in the League Cup. So the games don't really... Um, get any easier so Bernardo Silva will kind of be assessed um, today on Thursday to see the extent of his, his injury I'm not sure how how big it will be I think you know it, d- it didn't look too bad um, but yeah City will have to wait and see on his injury but despite that despite the injuries kind of piling up City continue to to march on they were always expected to be Red Star you know it's a comfortable start in what looks to be a comfortable group, but you still have to win your games. And that's what Guardiola was looking for. Uh, you know, he spoke before this game about um, the anger that he found in the, the dressing room at half time at West Ham when he thought they'd play well, but they were upset that they were losing the players. So um, again, they found themselves losing at half time. And again, there was a swift response and they came back and did enough to win the game. So that appetite to to win has has not been lost. Um, and is present in the early season and you know the more points they can pick up the more they will um, you know look to uh, to ride their their injury situation out De Bruyne is obviously out for a long time but Kovacic is is hoping to be back soon Grealish and Stone shouldn't be out for too much longer 
Um, and then, yeah, Bernardo Silva shouldn't be out for, for very long at all. So, um, it, it looks a bit bleak the minute the injury situation, but, um, there are sort of hope on the, on the horizon that it could get better relatively quickly. Um, and in the meantime, see, so just keep, keep winning football matches, whether that is, is Premier League or Champions League. And, and they will have to see what the, uh, the Carabao Cup throws up, but, you know, they're, they're one game at a time. Mantra is certainly working for them at the minute. Place. Hi, Pep. Well done tonight. Um, how similar was the half-time message tonight to the one you had to give against West Ham? Yeah, quite similar. We were playing really, really well. Uh, the last two games, I don't know. The chances and the clear, clear, clear chances we miss, and football is an important part that we are struggling a little bit. But the fact the way we are playing, of, of course, running, fighting is so we said strong in your heads and keep going, keep going. And at the end, we, we did it with that first goal as well for Alvarez. Can you just talk us through the level of difficulty in that finish because the touch and then the finish? Was yeah, so it was weird. really good. All the action was really good. That's just from Evely was really good, and the movement so quick. and He's so young. It's what a what a what a sign we have done. The club have done from Argentina. Uh, he has everything: uh, fighting and goals and assists, and incredible, lovely guy. So the playing behind behind Erling is an incredible threat. Yeah, really pleased, really pleased for him because he deserves it. And I just check on Bernardo as well. Uh, well. Uh, but he didn't say anything at the end it was disturbing and I didn't speak with the doctors but apparently apparently for the next games we will not be able to, to play Stan um, just on, on Alvarez when he when he came back from the World Cup after he won the World Cup everybody kind of looked at him and said he's won the World Cup but he can't can't get in the City team <sighs> and yet he now seems so influential how but it's the same player, it's the same player like uh, like uh, like it was last season. Um, means a World Cup winner doesn't mean you have to play all the time and don't win the 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 World Cup doesn't mean you don't have to play. It's the same player. Uh, last season have Kevin in Gundo in that position it was in top form. Gundo was incredible last season. In the moment sometimes it was difficult to find spaces, but never have a doubt. When I say yesterday, Gundo gone. And Kevin, unfortunately, is injured. So, and uh, we need players to be close to Erling. Don't put all the responsibility just in the shoulders. Or Erling has scored a ball of balls, and that's why when Phil played there, when 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 Julian played there, I had the feeling that created a lot, a lot of chances. Just now we are missing, and the keeper was accepted. Maybe the second goal, the second goal was fantastic. He could have saved us. It had the feeling that the, the game we have started scored the chance we had in the first five, ten minutes, one or two goals, the game would completely different. But at the end, going the half time with zero one after we have done that is nice. That maybe we need it, you know. After win the travel, we need this type of challenge to prove ourselves. We were able to make a comeback. What happened in West Ham, and this situation is nice to prove it. And both both games they perform incredible. In middle of the second half against West Ham, in middle of the second half here. We make a goal and we did uh, come back. Things to improve, but in general, is is really really good. James, hi, Pat. Uh, another goal for Rodri tonight. Can you explain how he's changed since you brought him here? And is there a, a better midfielder in Europe? Right now, yeah. Right now, there is a better. Midfielder. He's the best. Yeah, yeah. He's the best. Sir. Yeah, he's the best. For, or hopefully, he can can be better. Have a good mentality and good uh, things to improve to read, but. Uh, He's a he's an extraordinary, extraordinary holding midfielder. We were lucky again that uh, the club signed this type of players, and when we arrived, was a type of player. And of course, he make an amount amount of games. Now he's a captain and one of the captains of the team, and he's a he's a fantastic, fantastic holding midfielder. Not just for the the goal has done, he's top class player. But not just of that, is the amount of defensively, offensively, the composer, read the spaces, where they can know exactly where the men free. Uh, close to the box is so dangerous because he loves to arrive in the final third and make a dribbles and shoot. And yeah, he's playing really, really well. 
Joe. Oh. Oh, but um, with Bernardo out you know, a little bit, is it encouraging to see Mateus Nunes play as well as he did today? But Mateus player for the first game, uh, play sh- not not much time and have a special quality when you know when when we leave it with Mateo, Kevin the bro- Kevin, you know, had the ability when he can start driving the ball, it's unstoppable. But needs time still to improve and 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 believe that he can do more than sometimes he does. But yeah, really pleased for the game he played. It should. Hi Pep, just a bit about Oscar Bob, and um, obviously he made his Champions League debut tonight. What do you expect from him this season? Well, he's okay, he's dynamic, he has a good shot, he's a courage, he lost two balls, he has to improve to do it in the final third, but sometimes it happens. But he see his personality, he's not shy, he's go there and, and you know, and uh, yeah, he's incredible work ethic, uh, so aggressive without the ball. He's a guy like, uh, had the feeling like, uh, some players like uh, Cole Palmer and, and McAtee and Riyad left and the other one, he will have a lot of minutes. You have to be ready to to use it. Sorry? And now we have um, we have uh, Nottingham Forest, two Champions League winners. So this is it. we have one more Champions League than us. So this is the truth. I'm not joking. So. First Nottingham Forest, and after we see what happened, the next one. Sam? Hi, Pep. It seems like there's so many different extra ways to attack, new ways. Obviously, Jeremy Doku is a great example of that, um, Foden and Alvarez. But going back to what James says about Rodri, the way that you can rely on him to dribble the ball up to the edge of the box to shoot, especially tonight with Rodri, Foden and Alvarez moving out, Rodri coming through, is that something yeah. that you can really use? This more this season yeah. than you've ever used before. Yeah, especially when the holding midfielders follow uh, our plays in the pockets. They follow and they, you know, they like you say, they open and they defend with four or five. The space is there, and and really use it, um, uh, use it uh, really, really, really well. You're right. So he's a player like uh, he can he can read uh, these spaces in defense of the uh, the movement. He likes he likes to. To drive in that position, and after that, had the vision. I remember against, for example, West Ham, it was an action we commit and put an assist like a topping and Erling make a, a shoot like that. So he used it, and you know, in front of the goal against Aston Villa when we won the Premier League, he scored from 80 yard box, and you look the final Champions League. You know, holding midfielder arriving in that position is not usual, but he loved it, and uh, and we can use it. We can use it perfectly. Mike, then you ended up with just three subs. But unused, two of them goalkeepers. Do you feel you have enough first team players for the matches that you've got? Well, or, and also, would you feel that would you use younger players for the bench? No, I, I, listen, when we have five important, but group, when I said important, I said really, really important players injured. So, sustain that for a long, long time would be difficult, but it's what it is. So, so we cannot have a, with the salaries, with the budgets for the transfer. Uh, with the clubs have 35 the players because you go to the the chaos for the clubs and the bankrupt so it's going to happen so when sometimes it happened so unfortunately it is so long time for 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 Kevin John still didn't play it's a little bit long maybe Koba is coming back and and what else uh, Jack is mm, maybe yeah in one week 10 days maybe we'll be there so but after you have to make the fear condition we are in trouble but it's where it is I'm not going to go to say how oh, we have a lot of injuries. It's what it is. So I prefer to be everyone, and uh, and with the players that we have, go for it. So as much you have this mentality and go in there, so that's good. As for Mikhail, please, guys. About Oscar Bob, um, how do you work with him in the training and into the games, and what does he lack like to to be a you know first team regular? Listen, I would like to tell you how good we are the manager to train the training session, but this amazing schedule that we have with the training. So we just how how are you? How was the breakfast? Lunchtime? Recovery? We don't training. He cannot improve with the managers because we don't have training sessions, but we have to recover it because the schedule is what it is. We have the game every three days. So I have for the academy that was really, really well educated. And of course we had some details for the moments, for the you can move more in this space. Uh, this tempo, the take decisions or whatever, and as much take minutes, 
that is really good. In this another question, this player can play in four or five positions up front. Can play both wingers, a striker play, false nine, and the pockets can play. So it's a guy who can give you a lot, a lot of alternative and have this speed is really, really good. And with the ball is also is one against one. Look today, no, I like this place when I run that pop up shoot. And the people say, Why don't pass the ball to Haaland? Why don't pass the ball to Julian? I say, No, 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 I'm shoot. You know, and that is makes good sense that uh I like this type of players that take responsibility in the final third to winning games and, and Oscar has this. Yeah, I think it was always going to be um, a difficult game for me because not not for you know the quality of the team and that's no disrespect to them because you know um, I think they're a good team and they've, they've caused a lot of threat to us on the transitions but I think obviously spending a lot of energy at West Ham and then coming here and trying to turn it around you know a couple of days later but that's the schedule that we're in now you know we need to get the rhythm and you know we, the lads need to make sure that fully rested and you know making sure that we're ready every three or four days you know coming into the, the season Can I ask you about Roger he scored the third goal tonight yeah. Pep said he's possibly one of the most complete players certainly in his position yeah. as, a, as a teammate of his what, what are your thoughts on it? No I think he's fantastic I think he steps up in big occasions scores big goals as he did in the Champions League and um, I feel that you know he, he's bringing that to his game now which you know probably he's not needed because is to control the possession and you know to quicken the tempo when we need it but when he can chip in with goals you know we're not going to say no to that and he's coming up with the right areas at the right time if we saw Bernardo go down tonight with a, an injury um, he seems to be struggling for numbers at the minute no I think you know Bernardo was um, I don't know you're going to have to speak to him but he, he seems fine in there you know I don't know what he's going to be like tomorrow but um Listen, I think a few legs will be coming back this week, which is, um, you know, a pleasing sight. And the numbers will be fine, you know. I think we never want to complain about the depth of the squad or the players that we've got or the players that are available or not available. You know, we deal with what we've got, and I think that's what we've done for the last number of years now. We're a team we put out. Be very fortunate that normally nine times out of ten we go and we've put in a good performance and get the, get the win that we need. Carl, I know um, nobody really said about the, the order of the captaincy yesterday, but obviously you had the armband today. How is that sorted out on a game-to-game basis? Like you've actually ways, because they're all. Am I right in saying there always was a, a hierarchy? You no, no, if you're there, playing, there's you a on. captain, but I just feel out of respect to everyone that's involved in it. There's no numbers. We're a team, um, and we're a team inside a team. Um, whoever wears the armband, or whoever has the armband on the day, or is going to wear the armband until the time's right. Until you know. The certain members in that captain group feel it's right to then announce the number or the order then that's what we'll do but until then you know it's i'm wearing the armband because i was the third captain last season and i'll continue to wear the armband for the rest of the season until the time's right i don't even think it's really necessary you know we're a team inside a team can i ask you about jeremy docker who's like um, he's made a very lively start and um, he's in- he looks incredible one on one obviously you're a defender who likes them one on one yeah what sort of problem does he present to opposition defenders? Every problem. Every problem. <laughs> um, I think you can see that in the last couple of games that he's played. The pace is frightening. Um, you know, for the, like, the first five or ten yards, you know, as defenders, we have to try and anticipate what they're going to do, but we don't know what they're going to do. And when you've got that pace off the start, off the starting box, it's, it's scary, but I think he still needs to, you know, add more to his game, and I think he will do under this manager with the you know, the coaching that he does and the style of play that we play, but to have that coming off the bench today and to start matches, it's a full-back's worst nightmare. Have you had a ratio? I'm <laughs> winning it. <laughs> <laughs> Over five yards will do me, but, it, you know, after, you know, 50, 60 metres, I'll, I'll catch him. So you've not? No, no, no. <laughs> um, the teams have been playing slightly differently this year. How exciting is that for someone like you who's been here so long and gone through all the different iterations of the sort of way of play so it seems to have come up with a different a different way to attack this shit. I think that's Pep being Pep I think teams work us out teams find the strategy and how they feel that we're going to play or you know how they feel that they're going to defend against us but when we can build up in different ways I think that puts another you know tool in our toolbox where we can change it mid game and you know he seems to be working for us I think 
at the start of the, the game against West Ham, we've played with me wide and then all of a sudden he's, he's pulled us inside and said me and Josco go in the middle, you know, and I feel that today, you know, as soon as a lot of players can play in, you know, in the middle and out wide, I think last year there was probably only John that could really do it, but, um, you know, he, he's put that pressure on Manu at the start of the season, you know, he's doing it on me and Josco now. So he's not relying on just on solely, which I feel that we did last year on John coming in to make that overload in the midfield. He's, he's letting you know all of us do it. Is that the important thing for a team that's been so successful? Because there's loads of successful teams over the years that seem to have gone a bit stale because teams have worked them out. Is that you didn't have to the have been key ingredient over us? I think long. I think he's the manager as well. He's got the key ingredient. He knows when's right to let certain players go, bring players in freshen things up here, give people challenges here and there. Um, he, he's got a fine balance in how to do it and it seems to work, you know, not just here, but in, you know, the number of teams that he has been at because he's been very successful. Successful, so probably the wrong person to ask. I just follow orders and, you know, listen to him and hopefully that gets us over the line. Cheers.